Welcome back into the College Football Every Game on the Board podcast, part number four, with our closer, our cleanup hitter. His name is Rob Vino. Find him on Twitter at Rob Vino Sports. Check him out, wagertalk.com. Robbie, welcome in. How you feeling, man? I am good today, Drew. This is always a favorite segment of mine. Um, I've been doing it quite a while and got the back end of the card here to go through. So a uh, big college football weekend season winding down. Lots of bowl eligibility stuff up for grabs here. Um, doesn't necessarily mean teams are going to win, though. We know that lesson. Just because you need wins to get to bowl games doesn't mean you get point spread covers. So we'll go through, the, through these games and see if we can point the people in the right direction. Absolutely, Robbie. Uh, guys, huge shout out to everybody shouting out on uh, Twitter at Rob Vino Sports at Drew Martin Betts saying they like the show. We do appreciate it. Also uh, on YouTube at Drew Martin Betts YouTube at the Wager Talk YouTube. Feel free to uh, reply below as this is part number four. The first three uh, sections before we had Kelly in Vegas, uh, Teddy Covers, Mid Major Matt in here. Now we got our closer, Robbie Vino. We're going rotation number 203 204. Army Troy down to the end of the card. If you go to the Wager Talk Live odd screen, it's the last section there. We're just going down in numerical order. So 3.30 on Saturday, Robbie. Army at Troy. 46 being the total. The Troy Trojans, minus nine point home favorites. What are you thinking in Troy, Alabama on Saturday, Robbie? You know, if the situation were just a little bit different, Drew, I'd probably like Troy in this game. I think fundamentally there's a lot of reasons to like them in this contest but let's start um you know with the bowl eligible stuff army really is in desperate situation right now in a desperate situation right now sit three and five need to win three of the last four in order to get to a bowl game and i tell you their their remaining schedule drew it's very doable they have uconn at home they're going to go to umass and then they have a neutral site game against navy But to get this one against Troy would be huge for them. Situationally, it probably sets up better for Army because, as I say, they are the cornered animal at this point, desperate team looking for a a spot in a bowl game. Whereas Troy comes off a real tough conference win against UL Lafayette Um, last week, 23-17 game. Troy gets the win. And now this is a non-conference game. Not a lot of meaning here. Troy does sit in first place in their division of the Sun Belt, And of course, Sun Belt division winners will face off for Sun Belt crown. So um, probably, I don't know. I don't want to say that this is a letdown spot for Troy, but it could be, especially in this price range, laying nine points. But their defense drew very, very capable against the Army rushing attack. Troy only allowing 3.3 yards per carry this season. They've been good at the line of scrimmage. And their passing game, um, presents a problem for Army. I think Army's pass defense, their secondary and pass rush are vulnerable to Gunnar Watson and company here throwing the football. So again, cases to be made for both teams from both perspectives probably leaves me off of the side, could lead me toward the total, which at 46 in a game where you know both teams don't play extremely you know army plays extremely slow troy doesn't play extremely fast and troy doesn't really hit home runs where scoring is concerned so maybe under 46 like i say under different circumstances i would lay it with troy but i just don't know that i can get there here Okay, I saw your lips stop moving, so that's got to be oh, my no. turn to talk. Rob, <laughs> you, you, you let me talk that whole time on mute, man. Um, <laughs> I, sorry about that, guys. I pressed mute. Uh, Alabama, Mississippi, next game up, 205-206, 64 and a half being the total, minus 12. Alabama as the road favorite here, Robbie. Yeah, I was trying to lip read a little bit. I couldn't get everything <laughs> there, Drew. But, um, yeah, it's a big game, right? SEC West, Alabama off a loss to LSU, a heartbreaking loss, really. Um, in overtime, they outgained LSU last week. You know, when you look at that game statistically, Drew, 
you would think that Alabama won the game, but they didn't. LSU did enough to get more points on the scoreboard than Alabama did. And so now Alabama, once again, SEC West Conference game or division game on the road. Um, 465 total yards last week versus LSU. And LSU's got a good defense, so nothing wrong with the Bama offense. Nothing wrong with the Alabama passing game, although... During the week here, Drew, what we read and what we hear is Alabama doesn't have weapons that they previously had. Jerry Judy, um, Devontae Smith, Henry Ruggs, so on and so forth. But boy, they were good enough to throw for 328 on 25 completions last week against LSU. The percentage of completions wasn't there, but certainly the yardage was. They were plus 2.5 yards per play better than LSU. They were 179 and a half total yards better than LSU. So I feel like their offense will be there in this game on the road. I don't doubt the Alabama offense. I don't doubt Bryce Young. Where I have trouble with Alabama in this game is going to be from A, a play calling perspective, right? The Alabama play caller, Steve Sarkeesian, ex-Alabama play caller, um, really had the Alabama defense on the ropes in the Texas game until Quinn Ewers got hurt. But you could see that Sarkeesian had a script developed that really was causing Alabama's defense trouble. Josh Heupel had a script developed, a very good offensive play caller, that had Alabama in trouble for the entire 60 minutes. Here comes Lane Kiffin off a of bye week with plenty of chances to devise an offensive game plan and again, Alabama's defense could be in trouble. Uh, Ole Miss has done it primarily with the run, but they've been very balanced. Um, the passing yardage is there as well per game, even though it's been a little bit, the scales have been tipped a little bit toward the run. Um, if they get anything going here, Drew, with the running game, this is going to be a very difficult offense to stop. For Alabama and they've Alabama's been susceptible to passing teams. Now, the trouble for Ole Miss in this game is going to be their pass defense. Hasn't been good against good air attacks. Tulsa ranks 30th in the country. Tulsa was moving the ball up and down the field through the air um, with that 30th ranked pass offense until Davis Brin got hurt. And then all of a sudden it stopped cold. Troy has the number 24 pass offense, total yardage wise, pass yardage wise um, in the nation. They had 286 yards on 73% completions. Let's just run through. I want to go through real quickly here the last five weeks of Ole Miss's pass defense inside SEC play. Against Texas A&M, which isn't known as a throwing offense, they allowed 338 passing yards and 64% completions. Against LSU, the 45th ranked pass offense, okay, but not great. 248 yards, 75% completions. Vandy. 281 passing yards, 71% completions. Kentucky, the 70th ranked pass offense, 220 yards, 75% completions. You hear those completion percentages and you think to yourself, man, Bryce Young is going to complete three out of every four against this team. Alabama's 28th in pass offense. I can see this game being high scoring. Total's been bumped from 63 and a half to 64 and a half. Again, Lane Kiffin with time to prepare. I think his offense will score. Alabama just went through a lot of reasons why they should be able to score here. Ole Miss has gone over the total in five of their last six games. The average score of an Ole Miss game in the last four weeks has been 38 to 34, 72 points scored. Alabama, 40 game out of their offense in SEC play. And against comparable defenses, I tried to find defenses in the SEC that are like to what Mississippi has. I come up with Alabama playing Arkansas and Tennessee. Those two games, the Arkansas game scored 75 points. The Tennessee game, we all know, scored 101 points. I'm going to try over here, Drew, over 64 and a half. Um, I think there's room there for this one to get over in what could be a real offensive battle. And Alabama and Ole Miss, when you go back through recent history, the last decade, they do have a history of playing high-scoring games. Next game up, Robbie, we got 207, 208, also 330 Eastern, heading to the Big 12, Iowa State and Oklahoma State. We're seeing the Cyclones, minus one point road favorites, 48 and a half being the total in Stillwater. What a dilemma, Drew, because with Spencer Sanders, 
power ratings tell me this game should be Oklahoma State 7. Without Spencer Sanders, does the game flip by 8.5 points? I'm not sure. Iowa State hasn't shown us enough offensive capability, especially on the road, for a flip that big. So from a sheer value standpoint, maybe Oklahoma State at home plus points. Garrett Rangel, the quarterback last week for OSU, 27 of 40, 304 yards, two TDs, but three picks against Kansas, which hurt. He'd have to erase those interceptions against a really good Iowa State defense. Gunnar Gundy may see some time, too. And Mike Gundy's playing at real coy here. He won't tell us who the quarterback's going to be. He won't tell us if he's going to use both. He won't even tell us if Spencer Sanders has a chance to play. So a lot of guesswork involved here in this one. Iowa State, you know, losing Brock Purdy and Brees Hall has just decimated their rushing attack. Their ground game is non-existent, so they have to do it all through the year. Hunter Deckers, the quarterback, has been better as of late. Their wide receiver, Xavier Hutchinson, for folks watching that may not have heard of this guy, he's the number one pass catcher in FBS football. He's got 87 receptions, number one in all FBS. You wouldn't think that the number one receiver comes from Iowa State, but he does. It's kind of a one-man band, though. They don't go anywhere else with the football. Um, yeah. You know, everything, things being equal here, Drew, I would think Oklahoma at home, even though their back end is vulnerable and their pass rush has been terrible, they've got two sacks in the last four games. That's 149 pass attempts against them and only two sacks, one every 75 dropbacks. Probably doesn't put a lot of pressure on Hunter Deckers here. However, Iowa State hasn't shown us much ability to score this year. Um, it's a, it's a tight game. I would think maybe the under money is right at 48 and a half Oklahoma state tempo does scare me a little bit. And the fact that Wrangle has a little bit of playtime under his belt now leads me to believe that maybe Oklahoma state could be better on offense. I'd love to trust the home underdog here. Just can't. The problem is if Spencer Sanders goes, this line is going to shoot up. Rightfully so. So right now you're in kind of a quandary. I don't know that there's a really good way to play that game right now. Robbie heading to the Big Ten up next. Also 3.30 Eastern kick. 209-210 as we're making our way down here. Part number four with Rob Vino. Wisconsin at Iowa. We're seeing a competitively priced game here, Robbie. Actually a flip favorite. Now Wisconsin minus one point road favorites. Low total 35. (laughs) Perfect Big Ten atmosphere here, Robbie. Minus one, 35 the total. What are you thinking, Badgers and Hawkeyes? It it almost should be knee-jerk mechanical reaction, right? I mean, it's got 17, 13 written all over it. You probably should just go play under 35, even though 35 looks low. Um, But then there's the problem with potential turnovers forced by these defenses leading to short fields that could get this game over. So 35 is just a tough place. If everything played out the way it should play out on paper, under 35 looks like a pretty solid bet. I think Wisconsin's the better team right now, Drew. I think since Jim Leonard took over, they found a little life offensively. Um, Braylon Allen running the football again very well for Wisconsin. They found a little bit in their passing game. Just because Iowa defeated Purdue last week, 24-3, a very one-dimensional Purdue team, um, Iowa took the passing game away. Um, I don't know that that really signifies any turning of the corner for Iowa offensively. Um, if this was a race to 24 points, which Iowa scored last week, we might be here a couple Saturdays waiting for one team to get to 24. But I think probably under is still the best of the two ways to look. Although I do think Wisconsin, I think the switch of the favorite in my mind, probably correct. I think at this point in time, Jim Leonard has something going on at Wisconsin. They're playing way more to their expectations right now here in uh, week 11 than is Iowa. So I would probably, eh, slight recommendation, Wisconsin, slight recommendation under. Battle for the boot up next, LSU and Arkansas, Robbie, 211, 212. We got the Tagas, go Tagas, minus 13 and a half road favorite. Are, or excuse me, minus three and a half road favorite. Minus fours are out there as well. 62 being the total. LSU and Arkansas kicking us off on Saturday, Robbie. Almost seems like the perfect situation to come in with the home underdog, right? LSU off that monster win last week. And now 
you know, Arkansas is a capable team for sure with KJ Jefferson at home and an 11 a.m. start. A little bit cold there in Fayetteville this week. The temperature is going to range anywhere from 30 to 37 degrees throughout the game time. Um, point power ratings, excuse me, make LSU a one point favorite. So I think that off of that victory last week, LSU has been padded somewhat. And now we're going to ask them to go on the road and lay more than a field goal. I'm not sure. Um, LSU just to me, and we've been around college football long enough, Drew, to know that this situational type handicapping at times does work. Um, flavor of the week, LSU now on the road, given more than a field goal. I don't know that I would do it. I think, you know, in a game that could go either way, in a game where the total at 62 is probably perfectly priced, I think that I would side with the home dog here. Anything over a field goal to me is well worth taking. I, I can't see LSU putting forth. Again, I'm not saying they won't come to play, but the effort that was exerted last week for Brian Kelly's team to beat Alabama, who's always the team walking around with the bullseye, not Arkansas. Um, I think that, that it, there's a little bit of a letdown here. I would try Arkansas plus three and a half at home. All right, Robbie, making the situational spot uh, awareness here. What about this one? Georgia and Mississippi State. Speaking of big wins, Georgia now uh, uh, in the in the driver's seat to make the SEC championship game, maybe the playoffs, but uh, uh, the defending national champions as well. Minus 16 and a half road favorites making the trip from Athens, Georgia to Starkville, Mississippi. 53 and a half being the total. Cowboys or cowbells will be ringing here, Robbie. What are you thinking? Yeah, for the sake of time and also for the sake to promote other shows that were on, Drew, I'll say this. Yesterday on the Best Damn College Football Show, if you guys want to go to YouTube and just play that one back, <clears throat> Ralph Michaels, myself, and Drew, we handicapped that game yesterday. Um, basic Reader's Digest version, so we can go quick here. There's a situational case to be made for Mississippi State. Obviously, Georgia with the big win over Tennessee last week. But there's a really strong fundamental case to be made for Georgia. We went through all the numbers, the entire handicap. I would recommend anybody who wants to see the full analysis, and you'll get Ralph's as well. Um, go back and replay the best damn college football show and get our Georgia and Mississippi State handicaps there. Like I say, we present a couple of cases there for both sides, but I think the stronger one was made for Georgia. New Mexico and Air Force up next, Robbie. The Falcons minus 21 and a half. As the home favorite, 37 and a half being the total in the Mountain West. When I saw this, I thought to myself, who is betting New Mexico in this game? Honestly, Air Force opens 24. <clears throat> they go down to 21 and a half. Trying to figure out why I go back. You know, New Mexico changed offensive coordinators midstream, right? Three games ago, they took first year head uh, quarterbacks coach, <clears throat> Heath Ridenauer. They made him the offensive coordinator. Here's what they've done. In three games with him at the helm, calling plays, scored nine points, nine points, and 10 points. 28 points total in three games, averaging only 25% third down conversions, averaging only 3.7 yards per play, averaging only 221.7 total yards per game. The play calling has been very, very run heavy. 64% to the run, 36% to the pass. The reason why I bring up those miserable numbers, Drew, is because the opponents in those games were New Mexico State, Fresno State, and Utah State. Just not a who's who of defense, yet all three handled this New Mexico offense. Where New Mexico State is concerned, they held New Mexico to 91 and a half yards below their season average. Fresno State held New Mexico to a season best for Fresno's defense, 138 total yards. It's the best Fresno's done all season long. They did it against New Mexico. Utah State also had their best defensive performance of the season against New Mexico, held them to 258 total yards. So, I mean, the change, and they've had a bye week in between to try and work out some things. Offense just doesn't work. Um, New Mexico's defense is good. Listen, it, it, they fly around, but they're on the field so much. And any Rocky Long defense is going to be good. But I want to make this point before we move on to the next game. Rocky Long has had success. And you'll read about a lot of success that Rocky Long has had defending this triple option. However, that success really was made 
at San Diego State with San Diego State's athletes. Since he's gotten to New Mexico, here's what's happened to um, Rocky Long's defense against Air Force. 2019, Air Force ran the ball 45 times for 213 yards. That's 4.7 per carry in 19. The COVID year, 20. And remember, Drew, in 20, in that COVID year, Air Force offered their football players what was called turnbacks, where they could skip the season entirely because of COVID and come back and play the next year. So Air Force lost 40 players, 45 players off the roster that year. Even still, <laughs> they ran it 63 times for 356 yards and 5.7 per carry. Last year, they ran it 73 times for 408, 5.6 per carry. It's just gotten better and better and better for Air Force and worse and worse and worse for Rocky Long with New Mexico's personnel. Um, the final scores in those games, Air Force wins by 22, 28, and 28, all better than the 21 and a half you're asked to lay here. The main characters in the last two wins were quarterback Hazik Daniels and running back Brad Roberts for Air Force. They're still there. Um, I don't know what's changed, Drew. I would probably lay it with Air Force here. My power ratings say they should be 24 and a half points better. Charlotte MTSU up next, 67 and a half being the total. We're seeing MTSU, that's Middle Tennessee, minus 11 point home favorites. We get the Raiders hosting the 49ers here in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Robbie. Guys who have watched us for years and years, Drew, they probably know exactly where I'm going here. Let's go up and over, over, over yeah. and <laughs> over again. I mean, last week, Louisiana Tech in Middle Tennessee, for those who watched, and I did have a play on the over, um, pretty large play. And they just basically dropped back and went up, went up top on each other. And completion after completion, score after score after score. I could see the same thing here. You've got Chris Reynolds on one side. You've got Chase Cunningham on the other side. You've got two really good passing attacks. You've got two teams that go quick tempo-wise. Um, to me, they'll make 67 look small, so I'm not even going to waste any more time. I'm just going to tell you I like that game over. And it doesn't worry you that Charlotte only scored seven points last week? And the week before, they scored 56, right? They were, they're in and out and in and out. But I think after watching MTSU's defense last week against La Tech, um, there's room or there's there's passing yardage to be made against that defense for sure. All right. Good stuff, Robbie. Uh, North Texas UAB up next. 58 being the total, minus six pretty much across the board. That's the Blazers at home in Birmingham. This is interesting. I thought I was going to get away with the good price of four and a half, and betters quickly jumped it up to six, Drew. This is a game where <clears throat> all of a sudden, and, and give Seth Luttrell credit, the head coach of North Texas, because he did the same thing last year, down the stretch, down the back half of the season, all of a sudden North Texas became a thorn in people's sides. And they're doing it again. And UAB loses last week to UTSA, and now they need to step up and win this game. They're the better defense. I don't necessarily like their offense, but let's face it, they were fa uh, they were faced with a little bit of a quarterback problem last week. Dylan Hopkins had sat out the week before injured. Um, wasn't really 100% last week either. I think he's better here against North Texas. I want to side with the favorite here because their defense is that much better um, than North Texas is. I didn't really want to lay six. Power ratings made it five and a half. But I do think UAB is in a real good spot here. And I don't think North Texas is going to have the offensive success that they've had, especially on the ground against this team that they've had the last few weeks. So, uh, Give me UAB, Joe. I mean, Joe, uh, Drew, um, in this game, minus the six, because I feel like they're going to, at home, be ready for this team. They'll take them seriously. 2-2-1, two, 2-2-2, two, one, two, 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 making our way down here. Every game on the board, Rob Vino, Drew Martin. Louisiana Tech at UTSA, 68 being the total. You touched on it before, uh, Louisiana Tech, they can score minus 17 and a half or minus 18. That's Texas San Antonio. The Roadrunners is the home favorite in the Alamo Dome. Yeah, probably another track meet, Drew. Not only does UTSA move the football, but they call plays very quickly. Um, they're one of the top teams as far as tempo is concerned in college football this year. And I'm sure Frank Harris and company took notice of what happened in that secondary of Louisiana Tech last week, and they'll go after them. And La Tech will go after UTSA. The number here at 68, um, 
it's probably I, I had to go back and forth with this with mathematics, right? Try adding up scores and seeing what's what is necessary here for the win. You probably end up having to get somewhere in the 4231 vicinity, 4531 for UTSA. And I think the 31 on the underdog side is the part you would worry about the most, but I do think it's doable because Texas San Antonio just hasn't corrected any defensive problems that they had um, stemming from last year. They're still bad on the back end. <clears throat> they still give up some big plays. So I think you probably look at this one from an over perspective. I thought the price was a little too high, Drew. 18 and a half seemed like the odds makers padding the UTSA side. Um, I show only 15 and a half. 16 and 17 and 18 are big numbers where point spread margin is concerned. So um, maybe a little look at the underdog here, but I'd probably prefer over. Guys, check out Rob Vino, wagertalk.com. Looks like he's on a little heater here, Rob, sweeping the uh, action board last night, going uh, 2-0 and with Central Michigan and Kansas State, seeing some winners in the NBA as well. He's got uh, uh, plays coming up for this weekend in college football. He's on fire with his 4% plays, 14-3, and 82%, the last 17. We've got a couple games left here, Robbie, hitting them quickly. Wyoming and Colorado State. This is the... Uh, what, they, this has a rivalry name. I think it's the uh, border border battle or something like that. Minus nine. That's Wyoming, the Cowboys as the road favorite. Forty two and a half being the the total here, Rob. You probably get to see our first snow game here, Drew. From the reports I read, snow showers expected for the first half of this game. Not a lot of precipitation, so they probably won't be bothersome. Um, two teams that are going to run it. Wyoming recently has run it real well. All of a sudden. They're just lining up like they did last year, the year before, especially, um, and pushing people off the line of scrimmage. That being said, there's improvement being made in Colorado State as well. Uh, they played better. However, you know, it, if I'm going to take both teams' A game, I'm going to play Wyoming here. Uh, line has jumped from eight to nine, and you never like to lay a ton of points with a team that doesn't score a ton of points. Uh, mm -hmm. But Wyoming still is capable of one of those 23 to 10s, 23 to 13 type deals. I think that's probably what we'll see here. I just like the way Wyoming's running the football at this point in time. And I like the way they play defense. <clears throat> so I'm going to probably try Wyoming, um, or I would recommend probably trying Wyoming minus the nine in that game. All right, guys, three games left. <clears throat> this next one, seven o'clock Eastern time. Then the last two. In the uh, late slate on Saturday night, the Shula Bowl next up as we head to West Miami, FAU at FIU, 54 and a half being the total. We're seeing the Owls, 15 and a half point road favorites. Are you liking anything here uh, in the Shula Bowl, Robbie? Well, FIU's world came crashing down last week, right, Drew? They had put together a little stretch there where all of a sudden, hey, look at FIU playing ball again. Yeah. But then they played North Texas last week, and I mean – it was over by the second quarter, um, not even a contest. And, you know, it's hard to tell what the mindset of a team like FIU is. I mean, they're not a very good team. Do they, do they get a little bit depressed because they had been making some headway, uh, becoming more competitive, and then all of a sudden last week they play a good team in the conference and get absolutely smashed? FAU is the better team. It's a little bit of a rivalry, but – FAU still got way better athletes, Drew, and way more depth. And I think FIU could be competitive for maybe a half, but not a full game. So if you're looking to play this one, I think the best way for me would probably be either take FIU first half or play this thing over the total <clears throat> because Florida International's defense totally caved in against last week. I think if I'm right, Drew, and I'm not staring at the numbers from last week, but I think if I'm right, North Texas got in the 50s against FIU last week. So uh, Florida Atlantic, very capable of putting up 40-plus. I'd, I'd, I'd use either one of those. I'd use FIU first half to be competitive, or I'd use over full game 54 and a half. Yeah, North Texas scored 52 points last week mm -hmm. on FIU. And that broke a three-game cover streak for Mike right. McIntyre's Panthers. Uh, 
who I guess have an outside shot at still making a bowl game, sitting at, what, four in five, both of these two teams. But, yeah, I agree with you. FAU, the much stronger team. Boise State and Nevada, next game up here in the Mountain West. Two Mountain West games to end it. This one, 1030 Eastern kick, minus 21. That's the Broncos as the road favorite, 47 and a half the total in Reno. Let's say snow showers again, right, in Reno. We love these night games in Reno where the light snow is coming down. Again, it's not going to be anything that should hinder the football game. Boise State, though, boy, they took a lot of money last week, drew against BYU, and got upended. So this is a little bit of a bounce back for Boise in this contest. How much fight Nevada can put up, I'm not sure. The offense just doesn't seem capable. In this instance, um, I could see Boise definitely putting the clamps on the Nevada offense. However, what Boise produces offensively is in question here, too, because I expect Nevada to play hard in this game. 47 is the total. I really feel like this is going to be one of those games where Nevada finds it hard to make it beyond 10 or 13. So from that perspective, I think we look under here, Drew. I think Boise really does come out with a little bit of fire here off of last week's loss play really good defensively. The home team has shown some defensive capability at times. So under 47 to me in a game that I haven't played and probably won't play. But if you're looking, if you're interested late at night, maybe the best look here is under 47. Speaking of late at night, Robbie, the degenerate special 11 o'clock Eastern heading to the Island 229 230 to end it guys for what week 11 college football last game here, every game on the board. Utah State at Hawaii, Robbie. We are seeing the Aggies minus 11 and a half point road favorites, 52 and a half being the total. Are you liking anything on the island in the degenerate special? You know, if you're a technical trend player, Drew, there's some trends that are really developing by both of these teams. In Hawaii's case, four and one against the spread under Timmy Chang in their last five, four and one to the under in their last five. The four-point spread covers in those five games have been by an average of 12.1 per game. So odds makers have been off on Hawaii, um, probably because Hawaii was so terrible to start the year and now seemingly have turned a little bit of a corner. The four unders played by Hawaii have been by an average of 11 points per game. So totals have been off with bookmakers um, where this team is concerned. Hawaii was 4-0. Against the spread and under the total up until last week when Fresno State played them. And Fresno State got their quarterback, Jake Hayner, back. And with Jake Hayner back, Fresno State just went right back to that high tempo, high octane pass attack, 55 13 win. It drew a lot of money. The total drew a lot of money in that game. Um, and Fresno State was dominant from start to finish. If you're looking at Utah State, they've also trended toward the under 3 0 in their last three. The average total final result in their last three games drew only 36.3 points per game. Utah State's been doing it with defense for the most part as of late. Their last three games have totaled 30, 42, and 37, all 10 and a half points underneath the closing line. So again, odds makers have missed the mark with Utah State unders. They've missed the mark with Hawaii unders. Here we're staring at 52 and a half. Both teams are running the ball way more than expected. Because you think of these two as high-octane pass teams. It hasn't been the case. Utah State, play calling-wise, 59.5% toward the run, 40.5% toward the pass. They don't do either real good. 163 rushing yards a game, 167 passing yards per game. So nothing real good. Nothing like what Hawaii saw last week out of Hainer and Fresno State. Um, Hawaii runs the ball 30 times a game on average, passes at 38. Again, these two teams are kind of run-oriented. The defense has been Utah State's anchor, 52 and a half to me, Drew. And the money has followed suit because they bet it from 55 and a half opener down to 52 and a half. I think they're correct in that assessment. I would probably try this one under the way both of these teams are trending. Under late night from Robbie Vino to end it, guys. That's the last game on the card. We'll get a most confident play here from Robbie Vino. Check him out, wagertalk.com. Those 4% best bets, 14 and 3. Last 17 NFL been good and NBA, a bunch of winners here. If you're looking for an NBA handicapper swept by the action board, I see Robbie, any final thoughts for the show before we shut it down? And do you have a most confident play for us? 
Yeah, as always, Drew, I'd like to end it just by thanking our viewers for following us for so long. Every game on the board has been a segment since, you know, Sports Memo wasn't even a part of Wager Talk. So for those that have followed us for that long a period of time, thank you guys for watching. Newcomers, thank you for watching. We appreciate you guys viewing. Um, for most confident play here, Drew, I, I'll go back to the one I talked about the least, but like the most, Middle Tennessee, Charlotte, over 67. Come on, man. <laughs> Give me over. <laughs> I could see both of these teams going up and down the field, especially Charlotte off a bad offensive performance. I would look for a bounce back here. Some points in Murfreesboro. I like it, Robbie. I like that one as well. So uh, Rob Vino, I'm Drew Martin. Guys, thanks for tuning in. If you could smash that like button, feel free to comment below. And uh, we'll talk next week with every game on the board. Have a fun, safe weekend. Cash those tickets.